It's definitely an adjustment going from, you know, the NBA to the D League, playing a lot of smaller cities. Sometimes there's almost no one in the stands. You know, you're kind of just focusing on the basketball aspect of it, and, uh, you know, that's why guys are here. Burnett dribbling into the paint, muscles it up over the rim. The D League is made up of guys that have different needs. His need is certainly different than maybe 95% of the rest of the league. Since you got here, attendance has gone up, the YouTube views, everything. Did you expect that much sort of attention to come with you once you joined the team? No, not, not necessarily. You know, I, um, I definitely have had a good following throughout my career, all the, the BYU fans and then the fans from, from my area, uh, hometown. Um, they've been faithful and they've definitely followed my career and I, I'm appreciative of that, but um, you know, definitely surprised of uh, the attention that I've, I've been able to get and that this team has, has been able to get here. And the uh, dates coming up for uh, teams to be able to sign 10 day contracts, do you have that circled on your calendar? <laughs> I think uh, lots of people know about the, the date, obviously. Um, who knows when you're going to get a call up. We'll see what happens, though. I'm, I'm more concerned about just playing the best that I can, and you know, hopefully if I get a call up, I'll be able to take advantage of it. Basketball was something that I just picked up and loved because my brother loved it so much. He was the type of kid that he was so competitive from such an early age, it was ridiculous. Kind of was a love affair between basketball and myself and wanted to continue to play. It was incredible how much a little five-year-old kid hated to lose and would do anything to win. Jimmer will run without numbers. Pull up three. It's good. Burnett pushes. High floater rattles in. Knicks on a run. In five years, we've been on one, two, three, four, five different teams. So we haven't moved every single year, but we've moved a lot. And it definitely takes a toll on you as a person. It takes a toll on your family. It takes a toll on you mentally. It's just, it's a lot of moving and it's a lot of inconsistency. I'm going over to, uh, to watch some film on our, on our game tonight. We play against Santa Cruz. Five o'clock game, so it's an early game. So we gotta be over there at three. So I'll go home and me and Whit will go get some lunch and, you know, relax. I got a shower and, you know, stay off my feet for a while until the game's going. So on the way to the Westchester County Center now. Right in the nick of time. To be honest with you, I always thought I was gonna be in the NBA. Even at a young age, when I knew that I wanted to play basketball, like when I was in elementary and in middle school, I knew that I was gonna be in the NBA. Like that was my goal. I never thought of anything different. I remember coaching him all the way up through and, and trying to get him to a point where he could maybe get to a, a D1 level. And that's what I was really concerned about. I, I didn't think too much about the NBA, to tell you the truth. I think that was more between Jimmer and, and TJ, and they were the ones that maybe set that goal more than, than, than I did. I don't care what anybody else says. This is what I want to do, and I have to take these steps in order to do it. Here's for that. Great move off the, uh, off the pass and he hits his first basket of the game. Once he started playing AAU ball, you know, 9th, 10th grade, he would kill him. And I'm like, any kid that's playing that high above his level has got a shot. And the crowd knows it. Please bring your crowd to miss. He's playing 2,000 points for Jim that. He joins elite company in section two. For me, it's been really tough to watch him you know, go through what he's gone through in the NBA and get cut from teams and now be playing in the D League, that's hard to watch. Because at BYU, I mean, he was the man. He was like the Justin Bieber of BYU. It was so fun and it was such a great experience. BYU was, you know, four of the best years of my life. Um, I started off as a freshman and no one knew who I was. We were hoping he'd get more minutes, but the minutes that he did get, he played very well. The moment that Jimmer Mania happened, 
was definitely the San Diego State game. It really was the biggest game in college basketball to that point. ESPN was all over it, and it was just a huge game. It's the hottest ticket in town. This may be the biggest game these guys will ever see. Okay, there we go. This is what's going to happen tonight. It's very, very exciting just to play in such a big game, one of the biggest games in the Mountain West Conference history. Once again, 43 points for Jimmer Fredette. And Jimmer comes out, has the 43, just a major game. So I remember after the game, I stand up on this bench, because they had these big benches. And I stand up on the bench, and I'm looking off, and there is just this avalanche of fans. What, somebody, LeBron James must be here or something. And I look, I look more carefully, and then all of a sudden, that's when I see it. There is Jimmer, my little brother, being treated like a rock star. My wife would always say, Jimmer, you're not as important as those people think you are. Yeah, it, it was good, you know, they said that I could really play. They think that I'm gonna have a, a great career in this league. Draft night was amazing because, you know, you're thinking, wow, Jimmer's got us here. To go from that, such a high high, to maybe, you know, not like the greatest basketball position we could be in, it's difficult. The NBA is much different than any other league in the world. I mean, it's the best, best league, everybody who is a great player in the world now wants to play in the NBA and there's not many slots. Former first round pick Jimmer Fredette has not lived up to his expectations and right now the Sacramento Kings and Fredette are working on a buyout which would make the third year guard a free agent. It's a you know doggy dog league. He was as hyped a college basketball player as we have ever seen to, to me. And then suddenly being picked 10th overall by the Sacramento Kings, when in fact, Jimmer Fredette shouldn't have been drafted at all. Hadn't been cut from a team before, and uh, it's, it's definitely a different feeling. It's just the, the way that things work out sometimes. So I was able to um, be drafted by the Westchester Knicks, um, number two in the D-League draft, and I felt like this was a good place for me to be right now. The ultimate goal for any player in the D-League is to move forward and make it back into the NBA. Here's Fredette on the baseline through contact. Skipped it to Fredette. Attacks right away, gets inside position. Burnett will attempt to shoot. It was exciting to bring him with his talents, his experience, and knowing what he needed to move forward. Burnett pushes. High floater, rattles in. You know, really, this was the best thing for him. He needed this because he needed to get back on the court. His feel for the game is outstanding. And, and so with that feel for the game, he is a very difficult guy for the defense to match up with. Burnett, pull up three, got it. I think he has proven uh, what he needed to show. I think he certainly can add to any NBA team. You know, as, as professionals, professional players, you have to prove that value basically every day. You never know what's going to happen, but I have confidence in my abilities that I think I will be in the NBA. You know, I think that there's a good shot if I keep working hard.